Can you guys hear me? Yes. Wait, or into the volume must be up. Into the volume. Well, it's not dangerous. Can you hear me now? Yes. 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 Okay. Sure. All right. I think we'll give it one more minute. And, um, and all right, it's nine, and we will get started. Um, and we are going to start with Wendy today. Thanks, Adrian, and good morning, everyone. Um, so Adrian and I want to talk through a few things this morning, and I thank you in advance for keeping this meeting, this conversation today confidential, which is, of course, always the expectation for this meeting for every editorial meeting. And the fact is we often use this meeting to share news with you. We want to continue to be able to do that. We want to protect and honor that trust, and I thank you. I thank you for that. Today is, of course, October 7th. It's profoundly emotional. I know it is a somber day for all of us. And it was one year ago that innocent lives were taken at a music festival location throughout Israel. And as we reflect on the events of that day, we remember those who were lost. And we recognize the deep impact it continues to have on families, on communities, and of course, the world. It also marks one year of our correspondence, our crews, all of you and all of us doing the difficult job each and every day of covering a highly charged, emotionally demanding story. It is complex and it requires courageous and candid conversations. Before I hand it over to Adrian, I wanna thank those of you who reached out via emails and calls to have those conversations with me. You shared your experiences, you shared your feedback in terms of our coverage, and I appreciate your willingness to do so. Please know that my door is always open for those conversations, and more important, I am always open-minded to those conversations. You know, Adrian and I talked about um, this quite a bit over the weekend and over the last days, and. I know I can confidently speak for her when I say that we're both grateful that CBS News is a place where people can feel and do feel empowered to reach out, to share their thoughts, to share their concerns. And we are both committed to it continuing to be a place that does so. With that, I'll hand it over to Adrian. Thanks, Wendy. Um, you know, for us, for us as journalists, Covering these difficult anniversaries is a delicate responsibility. It requires empathy, respect, and a commitment to truth. And today it will undoubtedly be hard and difficult. And I want to acknowledge the emotional weight that it carries, not just for those directly affected, but for all of us reporting. We all feel and we all have strong feelings and opinions. We're human beings. And with unique lives and experiences that, that shape the way we view the world. And I want to I wanna take the time to remind us all of something. When we step into a newsroom and we pick up a microphone or a camera and we sit down for an interview, produce a story, report from a scene, or anchor a show, we need to remember that we are journalists and as hard as this is, that means we set our personal feelings and beliefs aside. Our job is to serve our audiences without bias or perceived bias, to provide objective news that, they, that we know and they know they can trust. You know, the legacy of CBS News is built on a foundation of neutrality. And we owe it to those who came before us to ourselves and our viewers to maintain that standard to the best of our ability. Um, it's even in our standards and practices handbook that I think may have been around since Cronkite and Lerner. Um, I want to quote a portion of it, so please bear with me. Um, a true news organization, one that pledges to report facts rather than opinions and to focus on the way it is without bias must build and protect its credibility. Our audiences must know they can trust us. 
Our audience sources must know. They, our, our sources must know they can trust us. And nothing erodes that bond between us, our audiences, our sources, the people we cover faster than the perception that we have an axe to grind or that we are beholden to anyone or anything other than fairness, accuracy, and the truth. And that's why we all, as a part of CBS News, and I take this very personally, must conduct ourselves in ways that avoid raising any questions about our journalistic independence or integrity. We will still, I want, I want to be clear, we will still ask tough questions. We will still hold people accountable. That's part of our job too. But we will do so objectively. And that means, very plainly, we have to check our bias and opinions at the door. And that applies to every single one of us. We are not here to represent any viewpoint. We are here to tell stories. And I say this a lot. We are here to report news without fear or faith. I want to acknowledge there are a lot of times that we do this really well, and then there are times we don't. And there are times we fail our audiences and we fail each other. We're in one of those times right now and it's been growing. And now we, uh, we are at a tipping point. Many of you have reached out to express concerns over recent reporting, specifically about the CBS Mornings Coates interview from last week, as well as comments made coming out of some of our correspondents reporting. I want to thank every single one who reached out for your honesty, your transparency, and your commitment. So I want to address three things. Number one, after a review of our coverage, including the interview, it's clear there are times we have not met our editorial standards. Number two, this has been addressed and it will continue to be in the future. And number three, I, I want to acknowledge and I want to say, I want to apologize that it's taken this long to have this conversation. This is a highly charged and complex issue. I think we all knew that. And it was really important for us, for Wendy, for me, to have the conversations, to take the time and the breath and, 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 and think and then proceed in a calm and measured way. And I say that because this goes way beyond one interview, one comment, one story. This is about preserving the legacy of neutrality and objectivity that is CBS News. I take that responsibility very seriously. We want every show and every newsroom to be a place for courageous, robust conversations and discussions. That's a healthy news organization. And by the way, I'm sure we're gonna have a lot of those in, in the days, weeks, and months coming, and I welcome them. And at the same time, I just want us all to remember that we are a news organization. We're larger than one show, one person, and one story. And we will do everything we can. I will do everything I can to be better going forward. Um, I want to talk about some next steps. Shauna and I uh, are going to be meeting with her team tomorrow. Um, it's just important that you all know that we hear you and that we have an editorial standard here that must be maintained. And that is our commitment to you and to the viewers. And we will be laser focused on this, on making sure we meet the moment moving forward. I know this is a lot. Um, I'm, I welcome and I, I ask any and each every each and every one of you to please reach out to me with any questions. So, because we are a news organization and because we have a lot of news to cover today, including a hurricane season that doesn't seem to end, we're going to get into the news today, right? And we are going to start. We're going to, we're going to change it a little bit today because I know the hurricane is trending. Um, we're going to start with the hurricane. Wendy? Um, hey, Fish. Um, 
So, uh, yes, we have a raw...